I'm Shane Thomas. Uh, I work for the State Department doing IT project management. First time I met Kate uh, was back in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I was just coming off a of deployment to Iraq uh, and trying to complete my bachelor's degree. She had already been there uh, pursuing her doctorate. We met through veteran service organizations that were trying to get spun up in Tuscaloosa. Uh, she would say that the 11th commandment in the Hendricks household was thou shalt join the Marine Corps. Uh, because she joined, her brother joined, her father was a, is a retired Marine Corps colonel. The biggest reason why I married her was because of her heart. She had a big one and uh, she wasn't afraid to kind of show it. We learned that Matthew was on the way and we were dating at the time, for, had been dating for six to nine months. And uh, when we figured that out, that's when we started getting real serious uh, and uh, got married in May, uh, May 22nd, uh, 2014. And our son was born on July 2nd, 2014. So uh, we, and we were graduating that same year. So it was time to, time to start shipping up and shipping out. She would spoil him rotten. Uh, and she she loved him so much. She wanted to. Uh, she wanted Matthew to um, stay little, and uh, she wanted to be a mom. Kate was deployed to Iraq in 2005. Her getting out of the reserves, I believe, in 2013, and me being out, uh, or getting out of the Army National Guard, was that you could still get benefits from the VA for a certain period of time. So she and I would maintain status by going up and getting our annual physicals. Well, uh, she was 38 at the time and um, her, uh, one of the VA nursing assistants uh, had made a comment and said, hey, you know, I get you're 38 and I get that we're not supposed to give you a mammogram until you're 45, but because of the fact that you've been overseas, we're hearing stories through the VA that more and more women are coming back and having breast cancer. So it's probably a good idea. I'll refer you and you can go get a mammogram. January 10th, 2018, she gets the call and then she turns around and calls me and says they found something and I've got a few other doctor's appointments that we've got to start going to. And that began a whirlwind week of doctor's appointments that went from surgeons to anesthesiologists to uh, chemo school to radiation school to you know, this is the one year game plan that we've got. And the following week after that, we're called back in because more scan results had come through and her oncologist at the time said, so everything we did last week, throw away. Uh, you've got six to 10 years and that's, and you start chemo tomorrow. And when she first said six to 10 years, I asked, is that how long the treatment's gonna take? Like, it's just gonna be a long haul? And she didn't answer. Uh, and that's when we, kind of slowly started putting the pieces together that this is stage four and this is uh, this is the way this is the reality that we're forced to do, uh, forced to kind of live with uh, there was a time period where I had to sit him down in the room and explain to him why mommy was so sick and what the side effects meant and I said if this doesn't work it's not long and he was like what do you and so we had to have a conversation like not long as in mommy's not going to be here so uh, we, we just kept battling it. Her symptoms and her side effects kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then finally in, I believe it was March of, yeah, it was March 2022, we had run through everything. Her liver had gotten so bad uh, that there was, there was nothing else that they could really kind of throw at it. And we entered hospice and she passed away April 5th, 2022. And uh, hospice nurse came by and announced herself to Kate and tried to do some examinations, but Kate wasn't moving and Kate wasn't talking. Kate wasn't, she was breathing, but she, she wasn't responsive really. And then that day it started, the whole transition process started. Matthew had just gotten back from his, um, from his buddy's house and he wanted to come upstairs and see mama. And I tried to get him to stay back cause I didn't want him to see whatever was happening. Uh, and he waited until I came downstairs and say his final goodbyes and then Matthew came down and he sat down in that chair. And, you know, we've spent the last year and two months uh, working through it. We embrace the fact that the only way out of this storm is through it. it. There's no real way when you're dealing with grief or something like this to outrun it. You can never outrun it. Either way, at some point or another, it's gonna catch up to you. And, and if you delay dealing with it, it could be really bad in the future. 
Kate loved traveling, um, and she made me promise her that we would not uh, give up traveling after she was gone. So in honor of her, every year we're going to try and start doing a big uh, trip. Uh, this year was Niagara Falls, and we drove up there and had a great time being able to see some sights, and we're probably never going to go back. And that's kind of the thing, is I, I want the tradition to be some place that either we haven't been to before, or some place I haven't been to in a very long time, but some big bucket list-esque type items uh, that we can kind of go see the world. That way, when it's time for him to go to college, you know, he's got, he's got a lot of travel underneath his belt, and he can say, I've seen, I've understood that the world is much bigger than just what goes on at home. Kate's biggest regret that she had had in life, and her parents and her brother and her siblings, they will all back me up on this, was the fact that she was two months away in being able to get full life insurance benefits. So she only got a portion of those life insurance benefits. And we were able to pay off student loan debt and car debt and all this other stuff, but we didn't have enough to pay off the house. Uh, and that was the biggest regret that she had in life was the fact that the mortgage was still gonna be outstanding. Tunnels to Towers uh, called me and offered to pay off our mortgage. And uh, I was skeptical of that I because we, we had only been living here for a few years. It's, it was a lot. And when they offered to pay off the mortgage, I didn't trust it. I didn't believe it until I actually saw it. And then when I finally saw it, I, I, I think everybody kind of lost it because um, the one thing, the one piece of unfinished business for Kate had finally been finished. If, if you had that one five minute conversation that you could have, I, that would be the first thing out of my mouth. Hey, tell us the towers paid off our mortgage, honey. You don't have to worry. You can go back to, you can go back to heaven and have fun and know what she knows. My wife was Kate Hendricks Thomas. Never forget. <laughs>